Hello and welcome to another episode of Lemur's Corner. I am Lemur and today we are going to be talking about PvP base locations on the island. These are not going to be any specific order but they are going to be very different than those of the PvE. Now not some of them will be the same uh, however I want to be clear that there are specific ways and reasons that these bases I consider them better than the ones that were there before. So let's go ahead take a deep dive into those locations and see which ones we are going to go with. As I said they are not in any particular order. So the first location is actually going to be four locations now this might sound weird but they're the exact same location over four areas as you can see we're sitting looking over the water we are in one of the locations at 1022 um, this is actually the underwater large caves um, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly jump down here into the water I just wanted to show you where it was above land um, you're looking for this type of formation you can see the bubbles in it to enter it once you're into it um, basically this location is a fantastic location to build a base especially now that we have cryopods so so this is a huge underground area uh, obviously you're going to have silica pearls you can use in here and all kinds of fun stuff um, but very simply you can create a giant wall here a giant wall there tons of turrets create a wall down underneath here uh, with more turrets and just basically make it an extremely hard area to get in now there are water animals that can make this a lot easier but again you can kind of create a very difficult terrain to get through uh, because you're underneath uh, that's going to limit their ability to get in here so if you set it back just a little bit they can bring their animals in tank up all the turrets they want to try to but they have to throw animals out of cryopods in order to get them to come through so basically overall it's a very defensible and easy location since there's only two locations that they have to come in specifically it's only one so you can shoot the heck out of them and it's going to be a ton of turrets dropping a ton of damage into one location and it's not just going to be something you can just blow into uh, very simply and you can do whatever you need to do to make this work um, all four locations are going to be running across the screen those are all four locations of all four of these caves um, all of them are the exact same cave just in different locations the next location is actually going to be blue ob uh, this is going to be at 25.5 25.6 um, this is a fantastic location if you're looking for something that's easily defensible, uh, having lots of resources nearby, and on top of it, you have the bonus of being an obelisk where you can summon bosses and, and not summon, go to the boss arenas and fight them. Uh, this location, you can build giant walls around it. You have peaks to stick turret towers on top of. You can spread out that turret limit to where you have multiple towers all over it. There are limited ways up on top of it. It is in the cold. Because it's in the cold, this will allow you to go ahead and reduce the amount of armor or specific armor that many people have because not everyone's going to be just stacking up for armor unless they already build in the cold so you should have an advantage when it comes to that on top of it uh, so let's go ahead and jump to the next location this next location is actually going to be the snow cliff this location is at 32.6 14.2 um, this is really good location for pvp because it's easily defendable there's only really two ways in either you're through air or through land but it's one linear spot coming in you build your base on one side build all the defenses and everything running out this way uh, and they have to come through all of that in order to get there uh, obviously you're going to have to defend your base but the gap between there and there will allow you to spread out your turrets to where you don't max out your turret limit in one location and you can spread it out to continue building that uh, this will allow you to defend it and survive longer uh, but i want to note that it is very exposed so you're going to see someone here uh, just like in blue up you're going to know that they're here uh, you're going to know where to fight them how to fight them and it's going to be easily to scout from the water or things of that nature the next one again is going to be three locations this is the three icebergs i love these because simply the fact that they are isolated and alone so you cannot just build uh, other bases next to it you can't just bring land stuff across you literally are going to have to drop stuff in from either water or you're going to have to drop it in through cryopods or birds or something and it's just very easily defensible uh, this will allow you to go ahead and defend it and survive the battles that are happening there are going to be three icebergs that i suggest if you're going to build on them to build on this is going to be the first one uh, at 30.7 10.3 next one's going to be at 17.1 and 10 uh, that's this location right here with all the penguins on it and the next one's going to be at 10.7 and 10.2 uh, and that's this location right here where you have a lot of natural bridges and buildings to build on top of tons of penguins again but it allows you to build on a iceberg if you have a larger tribe i would suggest this iceberg or the first one if you have a smaller tribe that third iceberg is one of the really good ones this next location is going to be the Lone Tree Cliff or the Western Side Cliff. Um, it's specifically this cliff we're zooming in on right now. This is an amazing cliff because simply it's a cliff. You can't just climb up the sides. 
Uh, now we have picks and everything. Obviously, you can climb up the sides, but it's elevated to where you can defend your base. Uh, you can have turrets on it. You have small access to the water, but all land stuff is going to have to come around the side. It's only going to be individuals, uh, people, and things like that, mostly coming up these sides to try to do something to your base. Uh, but as again, you're so high up that you can defend it where you're shooting turrets way down and way out from your base. So it's not like they're just going to be able to walk into your base. And it limits the land location coming in uh, and allowing you to defend the base in a proper manner uh, and through there and really honestly it's only through this section right here or through that giant section there but you do have a large section over here that you can go ahead and check out to defend this next location is going to be the crag island specifically the stone structure you see in front of you this is going to be at 87.8 and 24.6 um, this is going to be one of those bases where you build over you take it over you've got this huge base and there's no really easy way to do it because of the fact that there is no direct land access to most of the place. Uh, your best land is going to be over here. You have Red Op nearby. Uh, one of the best, biggest negatives is going to be a resource issue. Uh, this is going to cause you to have resources that are limited because you're going to have to fly and go get them from other parts of the base. But it is a fantastic base location on top of it when you're starting off. It's very, very rarely that people are actually going to be here. So you can kind of bury a base in here. People don't come over this way. So you might have the opportunity to kind of hide your base in here and just kind of try to hide out and not get caught up in the mix of the server. This next base is going to be Stone Hedge, uh, or some people do call it Tabletop, but basically it's going to be this cluster of rocks with the flat tops on top of it. This will allow you to build a base on here. Now, let's be clear that it is only going to be air really coming up here unless you build a ramp up to it, then obviously they can use your ramp to do it, uh, but because of cryopods and all that stuff now, you should be able to build a massive base up here. Uh, some of the downfalls are going to be the issues of you're going to have to use pillars. Pillars are normally weak when it comes to PvP unless you work on stacking foundations, which is an option too. Uh, but you're going to have to think smart and think how you build this base. But once you've built it, it should be pretty defendable uh, because you can't bring land dinos in here to attack it directly. Therefore, you are going to have to bring in air dinos and things of that nature to try to uh, combat this structure, however you build it or whatever way you end up building your structure that you want to have and this is going to be at 88 55. Next is one of those common locations, and that is Herbivore Island. Uh, this is great for PvE and PvP, just to be clear. But for PvP, you're literally by yourself. There's nothing on here. You've got a little bit of metal. Uh, metal is not that far away. You can head up that way or head over to that little cliff right there. You have access to water taming area, and it's basically just one giant island. You have to hold it, tower towers all over it. You can defend this base pretty easily because you only can bring in air or water dinos to attempt to attack this unless someone tries to build a giant bridge coming across here but even then you've built up to the point where they can't build a direct bridge so it should be harder for them to bring all those land dinos across um, without having to swim in the water and then it's going to be super delayed because they have to swim in the water they're going to have dinos attacking them from underneath uh, so herbie island is one of those islands that's going to be fantastic and that's going to bring us to we all know it's coming. Carno Island. Carno Island is the exact same means as I spoke about Herbivore Island. There's an artifact cave on it. So don't ex so expect people to be a little bit more pushy about this one and not holding it uh, too defendable because there is a cave on the backside. Uh, I've heard of many people actually building on this small little island right here. Uh, this is kind of isolated and by itself you have access to all these carnos that come over on this base but you can defend that one over there uh, but just to show you really quick if you decide to defend anywhere you have those that island over there that one there um, but the cave is right here so if you want to leave that cave open as an option for people but of course you're on pvp so people are going to blow up your base if you give them an opportunity to go somewhere near your base so make sure you have this whole island defended if you're a bigger tribe you can take this whole thing over same thing as Irby, same situations as Herbivore Island. And literally right across the bay at 14.4 and 69.2 is going to be our next location. And this is the Northeast Cliff by Oasis. Uh, this is one of the better cliffs on the island. You can build a huge base on top of it, literally one entrance on top of it. The beach is very small small nearby. Uh, you can make a water pen down over here to the left of it. You have the Mountains right over here to grab metal. You have Oasis right in the middle for possible beaver dams if you needed to, plus the beaver dam run down the river. Uh, and you're kind of in the corner of the map where it allows you to kind of hide out and hopefully not get caught up in too much of a mess. Uh, but that's basically going to be your options for this one is the same idea. It's a cliff. It's 
protected. It looks great, and I hope it, it works out there. This is going to be at, again, 14.4, 69.2. But that's going to do it for this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and it helps you out on your builds for PvP to become the Alpha Tribe. Uh, if you're new to channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you have more locations you think are better, or if you don't like the locations to give, please leave them down in the comments down below. But as always, I hope you have a fantastic day, and we see you on the next episode of Lemur's Corner.